High on a tree overlooking the rugged Pacific coast of Costa Rica's Osa Peninsula, a massive paper wasp nest is fused onto the side of a branch. Dotted across its surface, large black wasps beat their wings. These are warrior wasps of the genus Sinoeca, reputed to have one of the most painful stings in the world. They are famous for a drumming sound they can make by scraping the inside of their nest to frighten away attackers, which gives them their common name. Fortunately, high up this tree, they are unlikely to be disturbed and won't have to resort to going on the offensive. These Sinoeca, along with other wasps, ants, and bees, all belong to the order Hymenoptera in the derived clade of Aculeata, which is the only group that possesses a venomous sting. The sting, which is very long and visible on this velvet ant, is a modified ovipositor, no longer used as a tube to lay eggs inside a piece of wood or a caterpillar, it is now used to deliver venom exclusively. There are actually a few wasps outside Aculeata that have dual-purpose ovipositors that can sting and lay eggs. However, they are far less efficient at delivering venom and less painful than true Aculeata stings. With the stings being derived from the ovipositor of female wasps, no male bees, wasps, or ants can sting and are thus harmless. Having lost the ability to use the ovipositor as an egg-laying tube, stinging parasitoids like tarantula hawks and velvet ants lay eggs out of a different opening near the base of the sting onto their victims. With this modified piece of anatomy, a tarantula hawk can utilize her sting to paralyze a large spider, allowing her to give her larvae fresh meat, but also control where the spider is. With the spider unable to move, the wasp is able to stash the spider in a burrow, hiding it away from predators and thieves. Many members of Aculeata, however, have found an alternative use of their stings, defense. The sting allows the delivery of venom through the soft skin of vertebrates, causing pain in the would-be attacker and hopefully driving it away. This potential for pain has caught the imagination of the public, most famously in something called the Schmidt Insect Sting Pain Index, and more recently on YouTube, where these stings are sometimes taken intentionally for a video. Personally, I have taken a few stings, both on and off camera, in getting up close to these animals with a macro lens. These include the quick burst of pain from an angry army ant that fades in minutes, to the slow burning harvester ant, which hurts for a few hours and remains tender for a couple days. So what is the Schmidt Insect Sting Pain Index? Entomologist Dr. Justin Schmidt became interested in studying the defensive properties of insect stings and initially used this index when writing a paper comparing hemolytic activity and LD50 of different aculeata. Hemolytic activity has to do with the destruction of red blood cells, and LD50 is the amount of toxin required to kill half of a given test population. He then developed an index to contextualize these numbers within the framework of pain. The index goes from 0 to 4. 0 is imperceptible. 1 is just a prick and doesn't hurt that much, quickly fading in minutes like the sting of the army ant. 2 is the pain of a honeybee sting, which is the baseline for the rest of the index. 3 is more painful, combining intensity with duration of effect, such as the stings from larger velvet ants and harvester ants. And 4 are the most painful, including the stings of creatures like the tarantula hawk, bullet ant, and warrior wasp. These numbers have to be taken with a grain of salt as perception of pain is subjective and based on a limited data set, sometimes only a single sting. Since pain from stings can vary based on how much venom was injected and where it was injected, in his actual index Dr. Schmidt gives stings a range. For example, honeybee sting pain can range between a 0 and a 3 in his opinion. In the first use of the index, Schmidt's analysis found that all three variables were unrelated. Higher hemolytic activity did not mean the venom was more toxic or more painful. For example, harvester ants are more toxic and have higher hemolytic activity than bullet ants, but cause less pain. These non-correlated factors indicate that molecules that are actually toxic and those that cause the pain can be different. 
There is an exception to this lack of correlation between pain and potency. When looking at the sociality of these species, a pattern begins to emerge. In Aculeata, eusociality has arisen independently many times. Forming a colony has many advantages in the way of collecting more resources for increased reproductive output, but this concentration of insects offers a tempting food source for predators. Since the chemicals that cause pain can be different from those that cause damage, an insect can have a quite painful venom that is harmless, a bluff that a smart predator can call, taking the pain to get easy food, and when the pain subsides, there are no lasting effects. This pressures social insects to have toxins that are more toxic to back up the pain and make predators think twice about tangling with the colony. Dr. Schmidt found a strong correlation between the overall weight of a colony and the toxicity of the venom, along with the toxicity strongly correlated with the pain index, meaning aculeata that form large colonies have individuals that have both more toxic and more painful stings. However, it has to be stated due to their small size, insect venom is really not going to kill a large predator. The point is to teach a lesson to not mess with them. It takes around a thousand stings from honeybees, which are quite toxic, to threaten a human. The exception is if someone has an allergic reaction to the venom, in which case even a small amount of venom can be deadly, but this is an extreme exception. In all, stings are pretty effective at deterring predators and some organisms have taken notice and have developed adaptations to take advantage of stinging Hymenoptera for their own defense. In the dry forests of Santa Rosa National Park in northwestern Costa Rica grows a spindly little acacia tree in the genus Vachelia. Its leaves and barks bustle with tiny ants of the genus Pseudomimrix. The tree is a paradise for the ants, giving them everything they need. The tree's swollen thorns are hollow and where the ants nest. The stem has extrafloral nectaries that supply the ants with sugar, and the leaflets are tipped with Beltian bodies that are rich in proteins and lipids. In exchange for this perfect home, the ants fiercely protect the tree from herbivores or any animal that brushes or lands on the tree. For such tiny ants, they have a pretty nasty sting and this relationship has allowed the little Vichelia acacia to be a very successful plant in these tangled dry forests. Other organisms take advantage of the signals these insects use to warn potential predators about their painful stings. Many organisms can recognize the bold black and yellow stripes of a bee or wasp. This pattern is aposematic, which means it warns predators that attacking the organism is a bad idea and will have consequences. This signal has been hijacked and copied by this soldier fly, which is completely harmless. However, its disguise was so good, I first thought it was a tiny wasp until I got a good look at its distinctively fly mouthparts. This is an ant. This is not an ant. It's a jumping spider. Looking closely, it has eight eyes and eight legs, with its second pair of legs being thin and when on the move it holds them like ant antennae. The cephalothorax is also restricted to give the appearance of a separation between a head and thorax, and the abdomen is attached to a restricted waist to complete the look of this ant mimic. This spider from a different family also tries its best to mimic an ant. In the cloud forests of Costa Rica, this tiger beetle mimics the spot patterns of velvet ants found in the region. Each of these arthropods are harmless to predators, but their appearance fools creatures into not messing with them. This dishonest warning is called Batesian mimicry. Interestingly, some derived aculeata have become stingless. Leafcutter ants are stingless, as are Campanotus carpenter ants, and these tropical stingless bees nesting inside a fig. It is thought that this loss of stings has to do with defense against other insects, especially ants, where stings are less effective, leading to a focus on chemical weapons, fearsome mandibles, and just being more nimble. These carpenter ants guard these aphids, which excrete a sugary fluid called honeydew that bribes these ants into protecting them from predatory insects, such as ladybird beetles and lacewings. 
Even without a sting, these insects can be quite formidable and can mount attacks on larger intruders by biting and spraying formic acid. No matter if you think the Schmidt Sting Pain Index is a good piece of research or not, one thing for sure about the index is that it is an excellent piece of science communication, bringing the order Hymenoptera to the attention of the public in an exciting way. I recall first reading about the index back in grade school and it catching my eye. However, I think it is important that we take the right lessons from the index and stinging insects. They are not out to get us. Most only sting if threatened. Harvester ants generally have to be pressed down to sting, and I have only really taken stings from them on my shoulders, where the ants get caught between my shirt and my skin. The only aggression I have really seen is when I brushed of a shelly tree and a pseudomimrix got me, or when I got a little too close to army ants. Still, in my filming of the raids, I only received a couple stings. These insects don't want to sting us, only putting themselves in danger to do so when they feel threatened themselves or feel like their brood are in immediate danger. Give them space, and everyone will be just fine. Want to descend deeper into the world of Hymenoptera? I have created a playlist of my videos exploring the members of this fascinating order of insects, from the epic battles of pavement ants in cities to the hunting habits of tarantula hawks in the cloud forests of Costa Rica.